This is BNN. Bruin News now is made possible by the generous support of C Spire, St. Dominic's, Orange Theory Fitness, Bank Plus, the Comparative Family, and these fine sponsors. This week on the show, retired state representative Robert G. Clark left a lasting mark on Mississippi. Dwayne Dimon has shaped St. Joe's boys and girls soccer program. Look for sunny but cool weather this weekend. Weather, sports, and all the news are next. Brew News Now for Friday, February 10th, 2023 begins right now. From the Brew News Now headquarters on the campus of St. Joseph Catholic School of Math, this is Mississippi's high school news leader. The award-winning, student-produced, weekly newscast, Bruin News Now. Reporting this week from the Mississippi State Capitol in downtown Jackson. Howdy everyone, I'm Emerson Irwin. And I'm Gia Pigarello. Welcome to this week's edition of Bruin News Now. We are here today at the Mississippi State Capitol, where the 2023 edition of the Mississippi Legislature is in the middle of its annual three-month session. We are also in the middle of Black History Month, a time to celebrate the achievements and contributions of African Americans, some still unknown to a lot of people, have made to our community, our state, and our great nation. One of the many African Americans who have made a difference in our state served right here in the Mississippi Legislature in the late 1960s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and all the way up to 2004. Robert G. Clark Jr. served 36 years in the State House. He was first elected in 1967, the first black elected to the legislature since Reconstruction. When he retired in 2004, he left a legacy of achievement and leadership. And what better person to tell his story than his grandson, being in own, Robert Clark. Robert G. Clark Jr. was born October 3, 1928 in Ebenezer, Mississippi, a small town in Holmes County. He grew up in the middle of the Depression as well as in the middle of segregation. My parents, four parents, daddy's side, uh, and my grandmother on that side, they was born uh, on that place uh, as slavery. And the place that we have today, that was a place where uh, my four parents grew up as slaves. Clark to this day lives on the same piece of property that his grandfather, William Clark, worked. He believes history, good or bad, should be embraced and learned from. And the only way to learn is through education. Education has always been a major part of Representative Clark's life. He was a, uh, somewhat strict, uh, no nonsense. Uh, education was always a issue in our house. Uh, he always required that we cut the TV off and crack the books. Perhaps his biggest legacy was built in these halls of the Mississippi State Capitol, where he served in the legislature for 36 years. Robert Clark was elected to the House of Representatives 1967 and took office that very next January. Representative Clark was the first African-American in the House after Reconstruction. When you're the first, that's a lot of responsibility. All eyes are on you. He carried the banner and did it well. And uh, it, I don't think I say it's been a pleasure to know and serve with uh, Representative Clark. While in office, Representative Clark rose to second in command in the House, reaching the role of Speaker Pro Tem. Also, one of his biggest accomplishments in office was the Education Act of 1982, which ensured better quality schools and mandated kindergartens. Robert Clark kept changing the perception of things. He knew that in order to move the state forward, we had to pass something sweeping. Uh, he became a partner with William Wynn and others to making sure that uh, we uh, passed a Children's Reform Act. The Mississippi State Legislature thought so much of Representative Clark, they named this building after him. Representative Clark was a leader, educator, and inspiration to many. He was all those and many more to me, including my grandfather. I'm Robert Clark IV, reporting from BNN. Thanks, no doubt Robert Clark paved the way to help make Mississippi government inclusive of everyone. Today, the State House and Senate is a diverse body of people from different backgrounds and races. Lawmakers spent this week debating proposed legislation. House members debated House bills while Senate members debated Senate bills. Starting next week, Senators will study House bills while House members will study Senate bills. In order for a bill to become a law, it must clear both the State House and the State Senate and finally be signed by the Governor. The Catholic Diocese of Jackson is closely following a bill that already cleared the Senate. The bill would extend Medicaid coverage for newborns and their mothers from 60 days to 12 months. 
The Jackson Diocese leaders said extending medical care will save lives. The diocese is asking people to call House Speaker Philip Gunn, asking him to allow the legislation to go before the full state house for a vote. In the past, similar legislation has died in the state house. The Senate did pass this bill last year, passed it twice, sent it over to the House. I believe that in the rank and file members of the House, there is support. Uh, the problem is with the leadership on the House side, and I hope they see this bill differently this year and we can get it passed. Enrollment for the 2023 to 2024 academic year is now open for returning in new students. You can complete the enrollment process through your family portal by using your existing St. Joe login. The re-enrollment is $200 and must be paid at the end of the online registration process. The online registration process takes about 15 minutes. If you have any questions about registration and re-enrollment, contact the school at 601-898-4800. Early registration is opened beginning February 1st through February 28th. Anybody that registers during this time will pay a $200 deposit and also have their name put in a raffle for a drawing to have their $200 refunded or actually applied towards your tuition. Weekly school mass next week is February 16th, a Thursday as usual. The following week, however, school mass will take place on Wednesday, February 22nd for Ash Wednesday. The solemn day marks the beginning of the 40-day period of Lent during which we prepare ourselves to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus on Easter. Ash Wednesday Mass will be at the usual time of 9.15 a.m. in the Fine Arts Theater. Easter Sunday this year is April 9th. The day before Ash Wednesday is Mardi Gras, Tuesday, February 21st. While the Jackson area doesn't celebrate Mardi Gras, they certainly do in New Orleans. And this year, our school band and the Spirit Steppers dance team plan to travel there on Sunday, February 19th, to march for the third time in four years in the crew of Toth Cardinal Parade. The Toth Parade is celebrating its 75th anniversary. The band has been practicing marching after school in the school parking lot. Yesterday we had an after school practice till about five and next week we have two after school practices marching with the Spirit Steppers and I really do love going. It's a lot of fun to do all the marching and my favorite part is afterwards we go to Menendorf and you know I love having the turtle soup there. Speaking of the Spirit Steppers, the dance team had an encore fundraiser this week. The team sold traditional and cream cheese filled king cakes for the second time this year. The cakes came direct from Jason's Bakery in the New Orleans area. Those who bought king cakes picked those up in the cafeteria on Thursday evening. Coming up, Paige Loyacono has the latest in Bruin sports, including an update on Bruin baseball. And Compreto with the weather has this weekend's chilly forecast. Don't go away, sports and weather are next. Hey Bruin fans, I'm Paige Toliakino, and this is the Bruin News Now Sports Report. Bruin basketball tops this week's sports news. On Wednesday, the boys and girls teams traveled to Central Hines to play in the South State Tournament. Both teams came out on top, the girls defeating Columbia Academy 41-30 and the boys defeating Brookhaven Academy 68-27. The wins advanced the Bruins further into South State play. Tonight, everything is on the line. Both the girls and boys will play in a spot for the South State Championship game. The girls will tip off at 4 and the boys at 6.30. The wins Wednesday night came after the boys and girls played in the district tournament last Saturday in the St. Joe Gym. The girls had a strong showing, but ended up second with Kapaya Academy taking home the trophy. The boys came out on top as the District 3 5A champions, defeating Adams County Christian in the championship game 51-31. to We just came off winning the district championship, and we're ready to win South State at Central Highs. We need everybody to come out and support us. In boys soccer, the regular season came to a close this week. On Monday, the boys took on the East Rankin Raiders, winning 3-1. At halftime, the Bruins celebrated senior night, honoring three seniors who have been key players to the team throughout the year. Then on Wednesday, the boys wrapped up regular season play when they defeated Central Hines at home 2-0. The boys soccer team finished regular season undefeated with an outstanding 8-0 district record. The Bruins will host the first round of playoff game at home on Bill Rayfield Field Monday. So we played East Rankin on Monday. Um, it was senior night. It was a really good night for our seniors. 
and um, we played well. We won three to one, and uh, we played Central Hines Wednesday, and then we got first round of playoffs next Monday. So we're hoping that we can make a run this year, and we're just really excited. In baseball, Brookhaven Academy couldn't catch a break from the Bruins this week. Baseball started the season strong with a road win at Brookhaven. The Bruins shut out the Cougars 4 0. This was a long awaited revenge game for the Bruins when they fell to the Cougars in the second round of the playoffs last year. The Bruins looked promising on the defensive side of the ball with many new players in the starting nine. Then on Thursday, the Bruins looked to take on the Hawks at Hartfield, but the game was canceled due to weather and field conditions. Next week, the Bruins will hit the road again on Monday to play Manchester Academy, and then on Thursday, host their first home game of the season against Jackson Academy. JV will start at five with varsity at seven. With winter sports coming to a close, spring sports are all officially underway. Golf under second year coach, coach Dylan Hambick, started practice last week at Annandale Golf and Country Club. Track has continued to practice every day in preparation for their first meet scheduled for March 3rd. So we practice every day after school and we separate into different groups with the sprinters and the distance runners and we just do our own workouts. And um, we went to state last year and we broke many records and I went to state and broke the 800 meter record. You mentioned Bruins soccer earlier in the newscast, and for many of us, there's one person that comes to mind when thinking of girls and boys soccer, Coach Dwayne Dimon. Being in cell with McCarty took a closer look at the impact Coach Dimon has had on his players throughout the years. When people think of St. Joe soccer, they think of Dwayne Dimon. Dwayne has been the head coach for the boys and girls soccer team for the last 23 years. As head coach, he had led both teams to numerous state championship and state championship appearances, winning seven state championships with the boys and two state championships with the girls, and coming in second in state with the girls last season. Dwayne was an accomplished athlete before coming to St. Joe. He played college soccer for Bellhaven as a defender and played soccer for the Trinidadian national team. After college, he played professionally in the USLA League. He came to St. Joe in 2003, where he began coaching soccer for the Bruins. Dwayne wants his players leaving the program, learning something new and growing as a person. Always give your best regardless of the circumstances. Enjoy working with the kids and um, the school Catholic environment and just the school community, parents being involved in all of that. Dwayne is not just an accomplished soccer coach for St. Joe, but he's part of the St. Joe family. Over his 23 years of coaching at St. Joe, he's not just won games, but he's also won the hearts of the St. Joe community. He has impacted players and helped them reach their fullest potential, coaching them to work hard in practice and games, no matter what. His continued commitment to his players has led him to coach nine championship winning teams. Uh, Dwayne's helped me a lot. He's helped me to grow as a player on and off the field. Um, he's given me a lot of confidence. He always pushes me to do my best and is hard on me when the time is needed. And I just look up to him a lot and he's helped me through so much. I've had Dwayne since I was in pre-K and he's changed me as a person and as a team leader. And he's motivated us very well as a team. Helped me become like more disciplined in soccer and become more of a hard worker. Dwayne has been a part of my life since I was born. He has been my high school and club soccer coach since seventh grade. Um, he has opened many doors for me and created many opportunities and he has always told me and pushed me to be my best. I think Dwayne's made a great impact on all of his players. I'm Stella McCarty for BNN. Thanks Stella. Coach Dwayne Dimon is one of the many coaches at St. Joe who has helped burn athletes in a substantial way. He truly is a testament to the devoted coaching staff we have here on campus. Well, that's it for this week's edition of the Bruin News Now Sports Report. I'm Paige Liacano. Go Bruins! Hello Bruins, it's Weatherman Trey with the Bruins is Now Forecast. Today, I have a little surprise for our weathercast. This may look like a regular remote, but it does some cool things. Let's see what I can do with it. Wait, this isn't right. I'm not supposed to be wearing this. Here, let me, let me see if I can do something else. This is, this is more like it. Let's see if we can get this correct. Let's try and go somewhere else. Oh, what? What? I'm not supposed to be here. I'm, why am I wearing shorts and teddy shoes? That's not what I'm supposed to wear. I have no time to change. Okay, Bruins, I have to do y'all's weather. On Friday, you can expect highs in the 60s, lows in the 30s, no rain. Saturday, highs in the 50s, lows in the 40s, with about an 80% chance of rain. 
on Sunday, you can expect highs in the 50s, lows in the 30s, with no chance of rain, but it's going to be cloudy and cold. That's going to be good. Well, hope you all have a great day, Bruins, from the one and only Capretto with the weather. Thanks, y'all. We wish the soccer team and Coach Dimon all the best in the rest of the season and seasons to come. And good luck to the baseball team as they begin their season and to the Bruin basketball team as they move through postseason play. Man, this third quarter sure is wearing me out. Me too. But let's hold on. We have spring break fast approaching in about a month. And on Monday, February 20th, we will have President's Day holiday. I know I'm ready for a quick break. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Bruin News Now. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the BNN channel on YouTube, where you will find an archive of Bruin News Now editions. Visit our sister news website at www.thebearfacts.net for more on Bruin News. Then check out the Bruin News Now Black History Minute and learn about the important African Americans from Mississippi. The BNN Black History Minute is available every morning through the month of February right here on the BNN YouTube channel. Check it out. I'm Emerson Irwin. And I'm Gia Piccarella. From everyone here at BNN, have a great weekend. We'll see you all next week. So long, everybody.